Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm getting ready to work this, this joist out and I'm going to plane the top of it smooth to make it a little easier to mark on with a pencil. I'll get the bark peeled off of this and then I'll, I'll finish laying it out and I'll start to cut the tenons on it. Okay, I've got the, the bark peeled off. If you can see, there's some dark streaks. That actually is part of the cambium layer. I can go ahead and work this out and cut the tenons on, do all my layout and get it ready. And then let this set for just a few days and the sun will dry that out. Okay, I've got the, the joist up here. I put a level on it about where the shoulder will be on the, uh, the end of the tenon. And I checked to see how level it was and I did that on either end and I had to twist this to, or cock it just a little bit back and forth but when I got it level I locked it down to the sawhorse with uh, a one before which is actually working like a metal log dog would except uh, when you're using a metal log dog on, in a situation like this you're hammering on it and it's hard to keep everything still this is the butt end I have it level across the surface that we milled and planed I'm going to take a hand plane and I'm just going to check this on the other end of it. This end's real good and flat and, and, uh, and it's level, but I do need to do just a little bit of work on the other end. As you can see, this is not exactly perfectly level. I'm going to use this little Stanley Bailey number four. It's just a smoothing plane. And I've got it set real light with, with my blade. And I'm going to take a little bit of wood off of this side over here this level and I've got my level on here and I've checked it sometimes you have to check it three or four times until you get it right on the money I'm gonna snap a line on this and if you look at this log it's, it's kind of crooked but as we talked on the video where I milled with the Alaskan mill with the with the crown of the log going parallel with your the bar on your chainsaw you're keeping the depth of your joist somewhat pretty consistent all the way down even though you've got a butt and a tip. I'm going to show you how I get a center mark on this. It's really simple. This is the butt end of the joist and it's around seven inches in diameter. So I'm going to mark three and a half on this side and I'm going to turn the square around and mark three and a half. Now it's actually be like seven and eight at that point of where I laid my square and then I'm just going to come in between them and get a mark and I'll do that on either end and snap a line and the line will actually cross that point right there. I'll go to the other end and get a center mark. I'm going to take an awl and I've just got a, a loop in the end of my chalk line and I'm going to set that right on the point very gently tap the tap it in there and I'm going to go to the other end I'm going to knock a little bit of the the blue dust off the line just snap it just a little bit and I'm going to pull this real tight and center right over that that mark that I made a blue line now that line's a little bit faint which is okay I'm going to pencil that in I'm going to make a pencil line on this chalk line if you look at this chalk line, it's about a sixteenth of an inch wide and I want something a little bit cleaner and a little bit more precise than that, so I'm going to come here and make a, a mark right in the center of the chalk line and I've got my mark that I used to snap my line and I'm going to get my square right on those two marks Then I'm going to just mark that with a pencil. Right down through there. And that gives me something a little bit more precise to work from. Now, this, this log will be cut off in this area right here uh, after I, when I get my, my exact length. But I'll start from the butt end and I'll, I'll do the same, same thing at the butt and mark it with a pencil on the chalk line. You can see my center line here. And I'm going to line that up on the inside of the long leg of my square on both ends on that line that we snapped. And then I'm going to mark on this side 
and this will be my cutoff right here. I'm going to go ahead and get this cut, but before I do, I'm going to show you how I get this cut square off the face of the joist here. I'm just using a little short straight edge, a little tiny square, and I'm bringing it up to the, the line that I made. Then I've got my other square, my big square, and I'm sitting it on top of the joist and I'm bringing it right up to the little square. Now I can move that little square and I can take my pencil and I can sight from the end of my square here right across this line just like sighting a rifle. And I'm going to make a, a little tiny mark on the side of the log here. Then I can take this flexible ruler and I've got it on the line on top of the joist and I'm just bending it down to the line, to the mark that I made on the side. And I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw right around that. I don't have to go all the way down. That will give me enough of the mark for my chainsaw to cut that. Now when I start with the chainsaw, I'm going to be cutting on this side of the line and I'll just bury my tip into the end of the log and go across and go straight down on this mark right here. Okay, that's going to be square enough for what we're doing. Now I'm going to come back to my center line here and I'm going to mark at three inches right here. This will be my shoulder that will actually pocket into the seal log. And there again, I come back, I'm going to use the same principle of marking that as I just did to actually cut the end off. I'm going to mark it right straight across that. And this is three inches. Now I'm just going to leave my square there. I'm going to take my tape and set on there. If you see, the three inches on my tape is just a, about the width of the line past the three inches on the square. So I'm just going to keep that in my mind. And I'm going to go all the way down to the other end. I'm going to mark 11.6. Just to the, past the mark on the, the tape. This will be my cutoff. Then I'm coming back three inches. Make a mark. And that'll be the shoulder. This will be marked just like I did at the other end with the square. And I'm going to go ahead and mark my shoulder while I'm at it. I'm going to take my chainsaw and cut this off on this side of this line. This will be the actual end of the joist, which is 11 foot 6. And we'll have 3 inches that will pocket into the seal log. Since this cabin is, is 12 foot wide, the actual inside dimensions of the cabin is, is 11 feet. And so 11 6 will be the total length of the joist with three inches pocketed on either end into the seal log. Okay, I'm going to check this again. I'm going to put my level back up here on the shoulder mark, which will actually be the control, and I'm going to look and see if my bubble's still in the middle, which it is. So that lets me know that I didn't bump anything out of whack. I can get about a three and three quarter inch width tenon on this end on this butt end. This is one of my smaller, probably the smallest uh, joist that I have. I really wouldn't want to go any smaller than that. So I'm going to bring my tape out to 12 inches and set that 12 inches right on that, that center line. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark the inch and seven eighths and the inch and seven eighths back. And I'm going to do the same thing right here at the end. There's an inch and seven eighths. There's an inch and seven eighths. Then I'll connect those marks. 
Now this is actually in the round, this mark right here, but I can sight that. And I'll do the same thing here. Just connect those marks. And then I'm going to transfer this mark and this mark down the end of the joist with a level. I'm sighting right down that line on the side of the level. And get it good and plumb. Then mark it all the way down the end of the joist. And I'll do the same thing on the other line. Sight down the edge of it. anything I'm just uh, trying to get this level and make a mark all the way across. I'm going to make a mark at three inches coming off the end of a square and I'm going to make another mark at six inches right there. This will be where I actually kind of bevel that back somewhat to the this this will be the shoulder. And I'll take my chainsaw and kind of cut an angle there. But my first move will be to cut on either side of those two lines that I made right here, the width of the shoulder, or the width of the tenon, I'm sorry. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this at three inches and six inches. I'm getting ready to cut this, these two lines on this side of the line here where I made the X and on this side where I made the X and I'm going to stay away from that line just a little bit and then I'll clean all the wood up to this line here and here with a chisel and probably a block plane but I, I want to get that real clean I'm going to take this saw and I'm going to lightly brush this a little bit to kind of clean it up a little bit more. Now I'm going to get my chisel. I'm going to use a two inch chisel and start cleaning all of this up. And I'll use this square since we had when this was sitting up like this, this was the top and we had a level on it and we laid all of this out with a level so I should be able to use my square and come right off the top of that and work all of this this wood back here and this this side will be square off of the top okay I'm going to start paring this down and for some reason I always like to cut, uh, do the paring down to the end grain first Start working my way across there real lightly. Just bringing that down to the line there. Work it all the way across to the other side. I'm going to come back and get this edge. Just very gently start working it down to the line. I just want to try to leave that line. I have a yellow lumber crayon and I've got it in a holder here. And I'm just going to make a little yellow mark here. Just rub it right along that edge. You don't have to get in a hurry doing this. decide to use round joist it will give you a good place to practice doing this type of stuff. Now I'm 
going to take a little block plane. Now I won't be able to do this entire surface of this block plane because when I get it over here, it'll start riding up on me. Now this is where that yellow comes in real handy. You can watch it begin to disappear and that's when you know you're getting right down close to your line. Now I can begin to take my square and start checking that. I've got it right tight on the, the top of the joist and I can get down here and look at that and see how I'm doing. I've got just a little bit heavy right there. I need to take a little bit more off. Just a little bit. Check it again. Just keep checking it until you, you don't, like I say, you don't have to get in a big hurry. But that is pretty close right there. And I'll just start working my way back. But as I go back, I'll have to use the chisel because I can't get the block plane all the way back. Got that all the way across it's nice and flat this side is square off the very top now this is not going to be something necessary that you do for a floor joist it's going to be underneath the house and not even seen but here again it's, it's good practice to get into at this point of your build to uh, Really get things as clean as you possibly can. All I'm doing is just cleaning up where the chainsaw left its its marks from the chain. And you can come in and start working your way down like this if you want to. Right, while I have it in this position, I can go ahead and transfer this bottom edge of the tenon back. It's just a little bit over five and three quarters. Let's call it five and three quarters heavy. And I measured it and made a mark here. And then I just took my, my little square and uh, just drew right along that. It's right in the edge of the wane or the round part of the log, but I was able to sight down this mark right here as I did this and I could keep it running straight as I mark this across. Now all I've got left to do is to cut down this line here and clip that little piece off and put my little scarf in there and then clean this surface here like I did that and we'll have this tenon complete. Okay, now we don't have to worry about holding a square to get our control or our side square off of this since we have this line and also this line that's over here that you can't see from this angle. And I will take my chisel and there again, here we go, right down to the line, just, just leaving the line. Then I'm going to come over here, work myself down to that line. And I'll do the same thing over here. Now I can take my 
my little yellow timber marker. Just kind of highlight the edge there where I've already pared down to the line. And I can just start working this, working this down just like I did on the sides. Here, I can stand on one side even though I can't see this line when that yellow begins to disappear on me then I know I'm getting really close to that line I need to watch out and I'm seeing that yellow here on me so I know I'm getting pretty close so I can take a straight edge I'm just using a little small square and I can lay down there and I can see a, there's a little bit of a, a bump right there going down to the line I'm setting a plane real light just take a little bit off of time you, can, you always take it off but you can't put it back Just keep checking it. This is where you learn some patience. Okay, I'm right there. Got just a little bit of rock. I don't know if you can see my square moving, but there's a little tiny bump right here. Now, there's no rock in that, so I know I'm completely flat from this point to this point. And I can do, go ahead and do that all the way back there. got this tenon cut and I'll do the same exact thing on the other end and I'll have it complete okay I'm going to run a girder down underneath all of these joists the actual span will just be half of 11 feet which would be five and a half feet and I'm going to cut a flat spot right here to set over the girder now these joists are, will be all different heights from the top side to where I'm going to cut this flat spot. So I'll have to shim on top of the, of the girder to actually give support to the, the center of the joist here. And I'm just going to do this with a chainsaw. Set my level up there. Just kind of get a bite here. A good sharp chisel is sure a pleasure to use. And that's pretty close there. I think I can get by with that. Okay, we're going to roll this back over and we're going to measure the width and the height of each of the tenons. And I'm going to put a number on this, this uh, joist so I'll know which one it is because I'll make a chart and I'll, I'll put the sizes of the tips, the tenons on the, the butts and tips on that chart. And I will be reversing the, the butts and tips as I uh, put them in as far as cutting the pockets in, in the seal log. This will be the fourth joist that I've, that I've worked out. So I'm going to put a four on that. And I guess I'll draw a circle around him. And I'm going to measure the width and the height 
of either tenon on either end and I'm going to write that down on, on top of that, that tenon. Mm -hmm. 